Again, this is the Ghetto Free Press, and I'm George Boston Ryans. Today marks the 110th day of my restriction since the death of Kendrick Johnson. Now, back on point. Do you not know that it seems as if, though, the Valdosta Daily Times, the only newspaper that we have here, unlike America's Georgia, where there's five to seven newspapers, it seemed as if, though, the old 1860 charter mentality that was in a, displayed in a charter that was displayed here at City Hall, second floor, leading into the Honorable Judge Edwards' office, or Chambers, rather, and it said that the mayor and council shall pass all proper necessary laws and ordinances for the control of slaves and to suppress and abate all nuances arriving from hogs, dogs, horses, and other animals stranded at large in Valdosta. That 1860 charter was reluctantly, I mean reluctantly, they didn't want to take it down under the leadership of former Mayor John Freddy. He saw nothing wrong with it. And others on the council saw nothing wrong with that disgraceful charter disrespecting the airmen stationed at Moody Air Force Base, especially the black ones and the white right ones. Yeah. So, what can we say when what happened to me as a veteran, much like the active duty people not serving at Moody Air Force Base, it's the same thing can happen to them. And when they go to the newspaper, they won't report it. You go to the television station, they won't report it. You go to the radio station, they won't report it. Not even that 14-year-old girl incident. Even until this day, 111 days have passed in her situation, and nothing but nothing has been published here in South Georgia, newspapers, television, and radio for the most part. And I've been saying for the last 20 years, there is an asserted effort to keep not just black folk, but to keep the entire populace here in South Georgia stupid, deaf, dumb, and blind to the times, and unable to make intelligence based on facts. And so because I use my camera to report about the death in the jail, the closed meetings down south and voting irregularities in Brooks County while the Secretary of State, Brian P. Kemp, sends his investigator down from Macon, Georgia, Glenn Austin, and nothing is done about it, no follow-up, no reporting back to the people of Brooks County. I've showed you about speed traps and bumps in the road and how Troop Street is probably one of the worst streets in the state of Georgia. No sidewalks on Forest Street that Councilman uh, James Wright have been talking about for years and the uh, uh, federal funds coming into the city, the VSEP program. All of these things I have highlighted over the years. One candidate running for the chairman of the Lowndes County Board of Commissioners, Reverend Floyd E. Rose, was threatened at J.C. Shack polling place and the Valdosta Daily Times ignored, the TV stations ignored, the radio stations ignored that incident until I went to them and asked them what they're going to do about it. Then they published the story, but they never put Reverend Rose's name in it to let the people know who was threatened at that polling place. So is this why they restricted me? Because I report what others ignore. Let me, re let me repeat. Is this why? They put me on this criminal trespass warning because they want to keep the people in Valdosta and Lyons County stupid, ignorant, deaf, dumb, and blind to the times so they can walk away with federal dollars, with DOT, the paving of roads. What's going on here? I don't recommend any of our sons and daughters to go fight in these foreign wars until we get this situation straightened out here in the United States of America. Once again, let's play a little bit of the tape. You see, the father called me the same night that they found 
his son. Let's listen to a little bit of what I said. And maybe all of this contributed to them doing what they did. But as Paul Harvey would say, you're going to get the rest of the story as we wait for the second autopsy. Listen, please. This is KBC out of Lawrence Rock, Com, YouTube, Boston GBR. I'm George Boston Rams, and I'm in Valdosta, Georgia. As you can see, the front page of the Valdosta Daily Times, they probably found at Miles County High School, old gymnasium. And I was called last night, approximately about 12 o'clock, to the father's house, and I went over and I talked to them. And uh, we find out that the no family member, according to them, were permitted to see no the foul play suspected. Inmate. I mean, to love one, they're at the, um, at the school. And so we uh, will be following this and we will get back with you. Once again, this is the death of Kendrick Johnson, 17 year old black African American male. Uh, once again, we don't know the headline says that there were no foul play. I've talked to some young people who discussed what was on Facebook. However, we know Facebook it's not the professionals, so we wait to see what is going on, and we expect to be updated. Once again, KBC, I George Boss Ryan. Bye bye. Yes, I started out on that case. I'm still on that case, and so when they banned me from the school and from Lyles County property, my friend, Reverend. John H. Robinson said either it was a cover-up or there was a conspiracy. He said that from day one because he said why would they ban you? He said they didn't ban Channel 6, Channel 27, NBC or no other television or radio stations so why would they ban you? Ah. And so I stayed on top of the case. Let me play another uh, video that I did and then we're going to stop for right now and we're just going to wait for the second autopsy but here again I think you all have a right to know and this is why I do what I do let's listen see what I talked about uh, before I was put under this criminal trust pass warning and now as I said before I'm in 110 days and nothing but nothing has been issued to me said to me the Justice Department haven't said nothing the Georgia Attorney General haven't said anything. The governor of the state of Georgia haven't said anything. No civil rights leader have said anything except for Ed Dubose of the NAACP, and I haven't heard anything from him. But we do have a few attorneys that are concerned and asking me some questions. But what I want, what I want is for people to be respected here in this county and this state. And I want a newspaper and a television station. We need to get in some more newspapers or some more television stations that can think out of the box of the old 1860 charter mentality that will not just notify the conservatives like our local government, city and county. They are, they are committed to going on the conservative radio stations where they down the commander-in-chief repeatedly not not the elected officials but they be on a station that can't find anything good to say can't find one thing good to say or positive to say about the commander-in-chief of the men and women serving in uniform out the Moot Air Force Base just eight or nine miles north of here and I can only imagine how those black airmen, white airmen, white right airmen, and others from various uh, military branches of the armed forces come here and must hear the negativity and then our government officials go and sit in pride. And many of us are not happy with it. We received a call from airmen from Moot Air Force Base, met with them because they were tired of it and they brought it to the NAACP and we went out and we questioned why no picture of the president was on the first floor of wing headquarters building. I went and talked to the vice wing commander 
Hey, listen, let's get back to this. There's something wrong in Valdosta and Lowes County, y'all. And somewhere, it's going to be revealed. With or without me. Listen, please. This is KBCI, which means keeping Valdosta citizens informed. Many of you are already aware that Kenneth Johnson, a 17-year-old black African-American male, was found dead in the Lyles County High School. Old Jim, I'm told. Last night, when I arrived home, I got a call from the father who called me. I went to his house, and he wanted me to call the state president, Elder Gold, the NAACP, to look into this case. And I talked to Mr. Eddie Tooley, talked to Mr. and I talked to others concerning the death. what took place. I'm not going to mention the rumors here today. I'm going to read the Valdosta Daily Times again, and I want to find out what actually happened. We have a record of Valdosta in terms of the news media, the members of law enforcement, as well as the citizens in terms of how they relate to tragedies that take place in the black African American community. The father called me a few minutes ago and told me he want to talk to the news media. I called Greg and Charles Six, called Lee Henderson, Black Pro Media, and I'm going to call WALB TV, but just in case the news media do not cover this, I intend to put it on YouTube because the citizens of Valdosta, Lyles County, the state of Georgia, and the United States of America have a right to know what is going on. We are tired in this community. I just talked to a couple of young black African-American men who believe that law enforcement should move quickly in this particular case. I repeat, the word is that law enforcement should be thorough, it should be fair, and they need to keep the general public informed. That is from the young people. And I have been saying it for a long time. The people are fed up. And I believe that it is indeed time for Valdosta to move into the metro status wherein citizens will not be at the end of the agenda, and so the people will feel that they are a part of the economic pie system here in Valdosta and Lyons County, Georgia. Now, what that means is that if you go to the Lyons County Board of Commissioners, you will find a little triangular shaped area up in the corner for people to record the meetings. It will not hold even two tripods. The space is not big enough to hold two tripods. Not to mention, if Channel 6, Channel 10, Fox come to this area and want to record, there is no space. Now, if you think that's bad, and this is under Chairman Slaughter. If Chairman Slaughter would not let me speak on my tr criminal trespass warning to the commission, and he chose and decided this before the meeting started. So now, the other people on the commission, I don't even know if they reviewed what I was asking to speak on. He rejected it, say I couldn't speak. I could speak on the Sunshine Law, but I couldn't speak on the other two issues that I had. All this has been documented. So the commissioners should be outraged in terms of why should one person decide what is, going, what, what is being presented by the voters? And why, if you are in the audience at the Lowndes County Commissioners meeting under the leadership and chairmanship of Mr. Slaughter, 
If you use your cell phone to record any segment of the meeting, immediately the sheriff department deputy will come over and, 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 and take your camera or escort you out or tell you you can't record. But then we also have it on camera wherein some people recorded and they didn't say nothing to them. We have this documented. Now, city council meeting, city council meeting, you cannot call the elected officials by name. They cannot respond to you by laws that they've put in place. And they'll tell you this at the beginning of city council meeting. They can't respond to you but they promise you that they'll get back with you. And I have it documented. I have people standing by that will show you that they never get back with you or seldom ever get back with you. Yet, the Georgia Attorney General talk about an open government and produce a handbook that apparently is not worth the paper that is written on. Let me repeat. Let me soften that a little bit. The pamphlet is not worth the paper that it's written on. And Georgia Attorney General signs off on it and say they are concerned about open government. If you believe that, then a bird can fly without wings. All you have to do is go over to Brooks County and ask the citizens, what did the Secretary of State provide to the citizens in Brooks County following two open meetings over there about voter election problems. People left off the ballot, not following rules, Robert's Rules of Order at a public meeting in the state of Georgia, and yet he has said nothing. I've got another calls from other people up in middle Georgia who said the investigator came to them and the Secretary of State did nothing. Now, I'm waiting for someone to call me and ask me for names or who will travel with me and let me show the world what our South Georgia news media networks have, have failed to report that I have reported. And again, just maybe this is why they put me under this criminal trespass warrant as if though I'm in the communist nation. 